All right, guys, so here we are in Rotortex database. So the first thing we want to do is we want to activate uh, multi-step routes and uh, storage locations. So if we head over to our inventory settings and we scroll all the way down to warehouse, we will be able to see storage locations and multi-step routes. So you want to make sure that you have ticked both those tick boxes and you make sure that you save. Once we're done with that, we can start to configure everything. So the first thing we want to configure is the two warehouses, super important. So let's jump into our inventory application. We go over to configuration and we click on the warehouses. Now, because I've set this up already for Rotortech, uh, I'll just walk you through um, what we see and, and the configurations that I've carried out. So basically here, we wanna have two warehouses, right? So one for manufacturing and one for quality. So this is how I've set them up. So let's go over to the manufacturing one first. Here we have basically the first step to, to do is, is call the warehouse, whatever it is. So in this case, we've, I've called it manufacturing. And then for short name, usually it's a three letter and I've called it WHM, M standing for manufacturing, obviously. Just always make sure that you find something, uh, a short name uh, that is, is clear and will always uh, help you to know exactly what warehouse or location you're, uh, you're talking about or you're referring to. Um, the second step, and this is where we get into the details. Basically, um, we want to keep the shipment simple. So the incoming and outgoing shipments, we're just going to keep it uh, one step. This just means that it's just a one step delivery um, instead of having uh, various further steps, right? So we're going to keep it absolutely simple. And we're going to see that it's one step for receiving, one step for delivering. Now, when it comes to resupply, this is the this is where the settings are different between the manufacturing and the quality uh, warehouse so pay close attention for resupply we want to make sure that we have ticked manufacture to resupply so obviously this is where we manufacture so we want to make sure that odoo understands that this is our manufacturing um, warehouse and in terms of the manufacturing process itself we're just going to manufacture it with one step so again we're going to keep it simple now, the last one, resupply from, this will only show up once you have more than one warehouse. And it will show up offering you the possibility to resupply from another warehouse. So for this warehouse in particular, for the manufacturing warehouse in particular, we don't want to resupply from anywhere. So the option here is to resupply from the quality uh, warehouse. In this case, we don't want that, so we leave that blank. We don't check that box. And this is basically the way that it should look. So we're happy with it. We click Save. We head back to our warehouses and then you would go and create another one which would be the quality now let's look at how we've set the quality up in terms of the shipments incoming and outgoing we'll keep it simple as well we just want a one step receiving one step delivering uh, but the resupply again this is where the, the 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 setup differs so as you can see we're not manufacturing to resupply so we're not actually manufacturing in this warehouse but we are however resupplying from our manufacturing warehouse this just basically means that if there's if we're looking to pick stock from this warehouse from the quality warehouse and there's no stock of whichever product or article component that we're looking for then by checking this box we're telling odoo to go from the quality warehouse to check the manufacturing warehouse and if there is stock there we will grab it from there and 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 then inventory transfer will um, be triggered which has to be manually validated so that that move actually takes place. But we will tackle this a bit later whilst we're doing the flow. So just make sure that these settings are all pretty much like this. I'm happy with this, so I'm gonna go ahead and save that. Now, let's go back briefly to the warehouses and now we have both warehouses uh, basically ready um, for them to get to work. Now, let's recap. We have two warehouses, but I know that there is something else that we need to do because I know we know that uh, Rotortech wants to carry out repairs in the quality warehouse. So that means that we have to create a location that is for repairs within the WHQ. So for in order to do that, we need to head over to the configuration and we need to go over into our locations. Now, as you can see, um, there's three locations that we have. So two of them are generic. That by what, what do I mean by that is that the moment that you create a warehouse in Odoo, uh, it will automatically generate a stock location in that warehouse. 
briefly, b- briefly put, you can't store anything in the lo- in, in a warehouse. It needs to be in a location. So we have WHM stock and WHQ stock, one for the manufacturing, one for the quality warehouse. But as you can see, there's an extra location, and that is the location for repairs that I have set up already previously to this video. So let's jump in and let's see what I've done. Let's click on edit. And now we can see that actually there's not a whole lot of configuring configuration or configuring that needs to take place here. We just need to find first or define rather first the location name. So I've called it repairs. Keep it nice and simple. And here, the parent location, this is the location that you choose where this uh, um, location is. So of course, um, I want it to be in the warehouse quality. So I've chosen the warehouse quality as the parent location, which means that this will be WHQ slash repairs. Um, additional information, basically the location type is an internal location. We can see that there's various different types, but for this particular one, it's an internal location. I know that it's intra warehouse. Um, at the same time as well, I can tell you that I have ticked the it's, it's a return location because I also want to be able to use um, this, uh, this location in case we have any returned items that are faulty and we want to repair them in order to get those uh, repaired items back to the customer or back into our stock. Um, so I've selected that to be a return location because I can use that in the future. So with this setup, I'm pretty happy. So I'm going to go ahead and save that. So cool. So now we have our warehouses. Now we have our repairs location within our quality warehouse. So far, so good. The next step is to set up our quality control. So it's not enough to just have a warehouse called quality. We really need to be, we need to specify and tell Odoo where we want a control, quality control to take place. So for that to happen, we need to briefly get out of our inventory application and we need to jump into the, the quality application. Now, we can see here we're on the landing page of the quality uh, control application and we have a quality overview. Uh, Rotortech only has one quality team. So you'll if, if you have various or multiple quality teams, you will see them here for Rotortech. You know, they just have one. Now, first step is to set a quality control point. So the point where the quality control is going to take place. So let's go over. And in order to create one, you would go ahead and click on here, create. Now, we can see that actually I've already created one. It, it's uh, the, the main quality team is in charge of this one. So let's click on it and let's see how we've set this up. Click on edit and let's have a closer look. So first things first, of course, the title. Keep it simple. Make sure that it's something that it just clearly tells us what's going on. So this is a WH uh, quality. So I know that this is a quality check that is happening at W at warehouse quality. I've selected the product to be the helicopter rotor unit because this is the product that I want to make sure that it's quality checked. Um, Rotortech has various different uh, items and components and, and final products that they sell. For the sake of this example, we'll focus on the helicopter rotor unit. Uh, but just so you know, if there's other uh, products that you want to be uh, quality checked at this particular, uh, at a particular point, uh, then you can add them here. The operations is uh, crucial, actually. So let's pay close attention to what this means. Basically, um, for every warehouse, there's uh, multiple um, operation types that can be um, that that are that take place uh, for each um, warehouse. So, because we know, or rather, because RotorTech wants that the rotor unit, so the helicopter rotor unit is quality checked the moment that it enters the quality warehouse. We have, I have selected quality and receipts. So quality is the warehouse and receipts is when a product is coming into the warehouse. That's exactly the point where Rotortech has asked or has specified that they want the control to take place. So I'm happy to have selected that. Uh, on the right-hand side of the form, we see that there's a control type. Now we want just all operations to handle like this. We don't want, we could choose randomly or periodically. I want all of them because they have ha- been having this issue for a while. So I want to make sure that every single unit is checked. Uh, type, pass or fail, that's totally fine. Um, we just want to make sure that it has, whether it has pass or fail. And if it has failed, we want to send it over to the repairs. So 
pass or fail works perfectly for us. And of course, we only have one team, so we would make sure that we select that team. Of course, we can select a responsible person, a response, a person that is actually responsible for the quality control in case we want someone that is accountable for it. Now, in the instructions tab, self-explanatory, we just want to make sure that we very clearly um, lay out the, the, the quality control check steps, uh, what needs to be done, and, uh, and basically also on the next tab, in case there's a possible failure, we can also uh, tell Odoo to give a, um, uh, an alert or rather like a message uh, if it fails to tell us to, uh, in this case, return this unit to the quality warehouse. Because as we know, the repairs will take place in the quality warehouse. Further, you have notes, no particular notes needed for this one. So I'm actually quite happy with this. I'm going to go ahead and save this quality control point. So now we know that we have our warehouses, we have our repairs location, we have our quality control point, specifically at uh, when a product enters the, the warehouse quality. And that's actually perfect because if we remember and think back to what we have just set up, we set up that the minute, if there's no um, stock in the quality warehouse, it will pick from the manufacturing warehouse. And when it when Odoo picks from the manufacturing warehouse, which is where the products are manufactured, and there is stock, it needs to create it needs to be transferred over to the quality warehouse. And at that point where that product is transferred back to the quality warehouse, that's exactly where the quality control will be triggered. And that is the exact point that Rotortech wants um the quality check to take place so i'm yeah pretty happy with this so we're gonna head back out so now that we have uh, our warehouses set up we have uh, the repairs location set up and we have also the quality control point set up the next thing we need to do is to set up our product um, and before we set up the product we need to make sure that we unarchive the make to order route in order to do that, we need to go into our inventory application. We need to go over to our configurations, to the configuration, and click on routes. Now, because I have already set this up for RotorTech, we see that we have that replenish on order uh, MTO route already here. The way that you would unarchive it is simply you would access this page, the routes. You would filter to see the archived routes. Imagine this would be the MTO. You would select it. You would action unarchive it and then by removing the filter you come back to the routes that have been unarchived so the ones that are active and we can see that replenish on order MTO is now officially uh, selectable um, or rather active which means that now if we head over to our products and in particular we want to look at our final product which is the helicopter rotor unit we head over to the inventory tab which is the place where we set this up to make sure that all the right things are triggered. Uh, so let's start from the top. We want to make sure that we check the replenish on order. By doing this, we're basically the replenish on order route uh, strictly just allows, um, or rather, uh, allow, yeah, allows Odoo to trigger um, either uh, to, to well to trigger the next step depending on what. Uh, we have selected whether it's a purchase or you know may, if the route would be buy we would uh, generate Odo would generate a PO if there's no stock. In this particular case, because we have selected manufacture along with the replenish and order, it basically means that uh, if there is no stock of the helicopter rotor unit, um, Odo will automatically generate a manufacturing order to replenish it. So that's uh, pretty much exactly what we want because RotorTech makes these um, units uh, as make to order. So uh, they're basically only uh, produced when someone buys them. So you have to have these two together in order to make sure that if there's zero stock, which that's the case right now, because every stock is sold, uh, that it will trigger a manufacturing order to produce this product. Uh, the last one, is basically um, the last uh, the route that is generated automatically by Odoo when we select it in the quality warehouse that we want to resupply from the manufacturing warehouse. So by doing by selecting that, Odoo automatically generates a route called quality supply products from manufacturing, and we can also select that route here. 
just quick note about this. Uh, because we selected this at a warehouse level, essentially, it's not exactly super necessary that this is checked. I just do it for, for, for safety or I guess just because I'm used to it. But bear in mind that if you were to not check this, uh, this box because it's already set up at a warehouse level, it will still follow that route. So, but let's just do it anyway for the sake to be absolutely sure that this will work um, as we is intended. So we can say that now that we have set this up at the product level, we should be pretty much all set. Configuration wise, um, we should be dandy. So actually the next step is to test this full configuration by carrying out a flow. So let's jump into the sales app. Let's choose one of Rotortech's biggest clients, Chopper Addicts. Let's go ahead and add the helicopter rotor unit to our sales order. And there's one important step here that we can't forget, okay? So remember how we want to manufacture this product in our manufacturing warehouse, but then we want to send it from our quality warehouse so that a quality check is also performed. So the way to make sure that this flow goes properly is if we go over to other info, we need to make sure that we select the warehouse to be quality. So basically what this, what this says is that uh, we will be picking this product, the product, we will be pick it, picking it from the quality warehouse. And so therefore from, it will be sent to the customer from the quality warehouse, okay? Now remember, because we set up the warehouses in such a way that if there's no stock in quality, it's gonna reach into manufacture, uh, into the manufacturing warehouse. Um, therefore, this should generate a few more delivery slash inventory transfers uh, for us. So that's absolutely crucial that you make sure that the warehouse is selected. Now we have the warehouse selected. We have the line, uh, the product line here, the order line. It's good. So because we work with Chopper Addicts all the time, we can go from this quotation directly to a sales order by confirming. And now we can see exactly what we wanted. So we can see three deliveries and one manufacturing order. Let's start with the deliveries. See, we, we see that we have one that basically says, okay, so we want to grab from the warehouse, we wanna grab the product that has just been ordered from the warehouse manufacturing stock. We wanna pass it on to an inter-warehouse transit location. Uh, this is, normal in Odoo. There's often transit locations that are created um, and are used. Um, so we can see that this is the first step. Then from the inter-warehouse transit location, it's sent over to the warehouse quality, uh, 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 to the quality warehouse. And then from the quality warehouse, it would go to the customer. So we have three different inventory moves or rather in in inventory transfers that will take place. The first, the first two being internal and the last one being uh, to the customer. But we can see that according to the status, they're all waiting for another operation. So basically, if we think logically for a second and we go back to the sales order, we can't do any of this if we don't have the final product ready. So this is where really being logical about the steps helps a, ho a, whole, a whole lot uh, with, when you're using Odoo. So let's go now and check out the MO has been, that has been triggered um, because of the MTO route that we have attached to this product. Uh, we see that um, a manufacturing order has been generated. We can see that it's respecting the bill of materials that we have, uh, that I have set up previously for the helicopter rotor unit. This is something that I did not show in this video, but I am sure that uh, you know how to get a, a bill of materials onto a, uh, a product. So we can see that we have already reserved all the components. Um, I think that we can check availability and now we have reserved them. Now we can go ahead and execute this manufacturing order because we haven't said that we have one here. So one has been done out of one. Odo is asking us if that is the case. If I say apply, it means that he just does one out of one. It means that we have manufactured everything that was to be manufactured. So now we see that this is done. And so we have this product in stock. Now, if we go back 
to our uh, sales order and then we go back to our deliveries, we will see that the status has changed for one of them, which is the first step of our, uh, of, of our inventory transfers uh, to make sure that we get this product over to the client as long as it passes the quality check, of course. So let's see what happens. Let's start with this one. We see that um, now under the operation, we see that we, we needed a helicopter, we need a helicopter rotor unit uh, for this transfer to be from source location uh, WM stock. And we can see that this has been, it's been found. So we can see that this is now there and it's been reserved. So we have found the one that we've just produced in WHM stock. So let's go ahead and validate this. Yeah, I'm totally happy for this to happen. Perfect. So now we go back to the transfers and we see that the first one is done and the second one is ready because the, this has gone to the physical locations and now it's ready to be taken to the warehouse stock. And as if we remember, this is where the quality check should take place. And the moment that we open this inventory transfer, the first thing that we see is that indeed we need to carry out a quality check before this product is authorized into the WH quality. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's do the quality check then. So here are the, the, the steps that uh, we laid out in the college quality control point. Uh, let's say that uh, this passed with flying colors, which is great. Now, because it passed, we see that the quality check smart button here has turned green. Otherwise, if there would be a fail, it would turn red. So, but because it's green, it means that we can proceed to let this into the warehouse quality. So now we can actually validate that. Yeah, one out of one. I, need, I want you to transfer everything that I've demanded. So now that's done. So if we hop back over to the transfers, we'll see that the first two are done. And the last one that we have to do, it's actually the helicopter rotor unit to the customer. So because we have it in stock, everything's ready. It passed the quality control test. I'm pretty happy to just go ahead and validate that and send that over. So actually now, strictly speaking, we have sent this over, everything is done, the MO is done, the deliveries are done, and therefore the customer is the customer will be receiving this helicopter rotor unit in their stock or in their warehouse, in their location in the very near future. Trucks on the way. So um, that's pretty much it. Now you would go and create an invoice and you know get paid. Uh, there's one more example that I want to share with you guys, and that is um, in case there would be a situation where uh, a helicopter rotor unit uh, has been sold, uh, but perhaps, you know, the quality control fails. So that would be, um, that would be a shame, but how, what, how would we go about... Um, Okay, perfect. So let's say, um, let's go ahead and carry out the MO. Let's check availability, make sure that we have everything reserved. Perfect. Let's mark it as done. Yep. One out of one done. That's all I want. Thank you very much. We head back to our sales order. We begin carrying this out. I already know that this is the exact steps that should be taken. So, and then this is where things would go different. This is where things could go south. So maybe this is where we realize, oh, there's a big issue. There's a big issue. So unfortunately, the quality check has failed. And now this needs to be taken back to warehouse. Um, this needs to be taken to warehouse stock. So actually, the, the quality check has failed, but we can still validate this and let it enter the warehouse quality stock. That's one way to do it. Another way to do it would be to not do this so that it stays in WH manufacturing and we how to, and then we would have you would have to do a manual inventory transfer which is what I will do right now. Um, this example what I'm going to do next applies for either of those. You it's completely up to Rotortech and to you of course about how you want to do that. In this particular case I'm going to go ahead and just move this over to warehouse quality stock anyway. So if we head back to the transfers, you'll see that the last step is to send the product to the customer. Okay. Um, 
but I don't want to do that yet because the product is faulty. So I want to make sure that it's repaired first. So in order to do that, we need to get our hands a bit dirty and need to do massive manual work in Odoo. So we want to go into our inventory application. We want to go and we want to do a manual transfer. Okay. How do we do this? Fairly, sim fairly simple. We'll create a transfer. So for the operation type, we were going, we're going to select uh, the quality warehouse and as an internal transfer. So for this, we'll, it's, we need, the Odo needs to know the source location. So the, this is where the product is right now, which I know that is in stock because I've just moved it there. But the destination location, I want this to go to repair. We've already created the location for that. So the next step is to just simply add the product and the demand. No further info that is needed for this. It's a fairly straightforward uh, transfer or operation rather. So now we've saved it. Now we have an actual uh, inventory transfer order. Let's make sure that we mark it as to do. So the moment that we mark it as to do, it allows us to, it, it makes it official. This is a transfer that is currently ongoing. Um, the first thing that we want to do, that the first thing that pops up is detailed operations. So we have the operation that we just set up. Detailed operations, we now have it blank because we first need to check if we have availability of this product. It is, it is important to mention here that if you check normally by clicking check availability, you should the, the 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 product should pop up here because we know that we have just transferred it over. But there's one important element that you cannot forget. Okay, because we have carried out. Let's go back to our sales order. Because we have carried out these two, and there's still one to go. If we click on it, we can see that this is this helicopter rotor unit is reserved. And therefore, it removes it from the stock as a saleable item or as a transferable item because this is pretty much ready. Let's, let's think about it just basically standing in the warehouse exit ready to access, to, to, to be taken to the truck and to be delivered. So actually what you want to do right now is you want to go to the last step and you want to unreserve it, which, makes, which basically says this can be picked. So now... If we go back, we can see that this is still waiting and it's not necessarily ready because we have not checked the availability yet. So if it happens to you that you, in the when you're trying to do a transfer, so if we go back to the inventory transfer that we were just uh, looking to carry out to send this over to our repairs from our stock, because we have unreserved this from the other one, now, if we check availability, we see that we can now find the one that we just unreserved. So it's perfect. So now we just we see that it's from stock to repairs. Pretty happy with that. We validate. Yes, one out of one, please. Perfect. So now we know that this product is in warehouse repairs. How can we make sure? Well, we can go to the inventory report. We can look at our rotor unit, and we can see that it is that one unit is in repairs and we can see that that's this one okay perfect now let's imagine that this has taken that the, that the repairs have been carried out the product is in tip-top shape so the next step will be to actually send this back to our warehouse stock so we would do again a transfer we would do an equality internal transfer. It's the same story. Now it's just the other way around, so it's reversed. We know that this is coming from repairs to stock. Helicopter rotor unit. It was just one of them. Pretty happy with this. I'm going to save it. Mark as to do. Let's hope that in the detailed operations, through, by checking availability, we find one. Perfect. There it is. We're going to go ahead and validate this. Apply. And it's jumped right in over to our stock. One more time, inventory report, helicopter rotor unit, and we can see that that one has simply moved back to stock and is basically now can be sold. So all you would do now is to head back to the sales order that we started with and you would basically carry out that last delivery. And then of course you would want to get paid so you could create a 
um, invoice and send that over to your client. That's pretty much it, guys. Um, fairly straightforward. A few things that you need to configure, particularly uh, the warehouses, the location, the control points, and make sure that MTO is an archived and the routes are set up properly on that product. And uh, as long as then the right warehouse is, is, is selected on the sales order to pick the product from, uh, which will allow the, the deliveries uh, to basically be triggered, the inventory moves, and of course the MO through the MTO. Those are the vital elements. Those are the, the, the steps that you need to follow in order for a flow like this to work out the way that it's intended. So I hope this has been useful. Uh, we'll see each other for the next uh, MRP session uh, video. So take care, everyone. Thanks for watching.